go for an end of year retreat I'm repeating myself you have heard me before but I will always drum it because these are ordinances that are fixed most believers are not taught that a retreat is part of the believers process retreats are times where you set apart you set apart time to be with the Lord to be all by yourself flogging it out with destiny listen carefully a retreat is a time that is set apart away from the noise if God grants you grace and you are buoyant enough you can travel somewhere be alone with God at any level you can even use your house just away from the noise and distraction take a day take it two days take three days and spend with the Lord what do you do in a retreat number one thanksgiving the first thing we do in a retreat is to personally lavishly express gratitude to the God who has kept you please learn this believers must be taught what do you do in a retreat number two an honest appraisal of the current year the year ending now you do an appraisal of the year this is the second thing we do in a retreat after you are done thanking God rolling before your maker thanking him for all he's done the next thing is you must appraise the year and I've taught you the indices that you use to appraise your year your spiritual growth your level of mental transformation your level of health and wholeness are we together your relationships your finances purpose and you know destiny advancement you gauge your life against these indices have I done well this year what would I have done better this year that I did not do what opportunities did I miss what opportunities did I maximize what instructions did I ignore what was the price the consequence are we together let me tell you this when you are doing an appraisal of yourself do not lie to yourself be sincere and honest as transparent before God as you can be okay this year I lost a lot of opportunities because of carelessness this year from a spiritual standpoint I was not serious in my prayer life not to feel condemned it is between you and God it's nobody's business this year had my highest rating in terms of spiritual growth but as a father I must confess that this year I was I did not perform my fatherly role to my family as should be I allowed my wife to be the person feeding us all through this year and I did not even tell her thank you you're having a retreat now Lord forgive me don't feel condemned Lord forgive me this year I allowed my children I don't even know where they got their school fees from it's only God that saved them they would have prostituted themselves I take responsibility a retreat is not the time to dance and ask God for more anointing you appraise yourself first after Thanksgiving appraisal as a man of God did I teach koinonia the best that I could did I help the people did I manipulate the people did I teach them truth was I sound in scripture is there something about my teaching method I need to change as a CEO go for a retreat it doesn't matter that it's a secular corporation okay have I paid my people well we made so much gain this year did I share the honor did I increase their salary? Some of the pillars in my company, did I bless them or I just ignored everybody? I ate all the profit alone as a CEO and the Holy Spirit tells you this is wrong. You need to change, motivate your people, encourage them. The security man who stopped armed robbers from killing you, he's still receiving 5,000 till now. You would have been dead, long dead. The man has a secret to all your office doors and all of that and he's not touched one naira. You are still giving him 5,000. He told you his wife has given birth. You are still giving him 5,000. Retreat. That's where you flog it out. As a man of God, I need to improve on my teaching. There's a lot of spiritual laziness. No. I need to step up. Maybe I need to go and meet another man of God. Have some time of discussion. Let iron sharpen iron. You see that now? As a ministry, I think we need to move to the next level. Structural establishment. As a businessman, in the place, you are appraising yourself. We had potential to have five branches of my business, but laziness and carelessness and fear kept me in one place. This is what you do during a retreat. 
any great man whether in the secular or in the faith walk who does not practice retreats can never be exceptional end of year retreats now generally speaking you shouldn't wait to, till the end of year before you do retreats you can fragment your life across various phases there are people who have retreats once every month they have retreats at strategic periods of their lives, their birthdays, their anniversaries, but every believer as a kingdom culture. One of the reasons why we give break, you can imagine, I told you already that a dear man of God confronted me one time and said, Apostle, you're an interesting person. How do you give a ministry this size break? What if you resume and nobody comes? You know, we give breaks for these kinds of reasons. To give you room because your relationship with God is greater than ministry if you remain faithful koinonia people and you are going down spiritually we're only playing games here you know that right so this is you and God now spending time with God spending time with family spending time building your destiny I want you built to not just the ministry built it is people who are built that can build the vision you believe that Go for a retreat, oh, in the name of Jesus. Please go for a retreat. I'm challenging you. This, this is, a, is a secret that has helped some of us. I don't know how my life would have been today without retreats. Give God time and you will hear him in a way that will surprise you. Give God time and he will give you direction. One direction that comes from that secret place will redefine the next 10 years of your life. Carry all your pain, carry all your confusion, carry all your burdens, carry everything to him. Cry before him and let him give you direction, let him give you help.